Welcome to Interludes with Chris McKenzie. And once again, we have lucky enough to have Ernie Bourne in the studio with us. What a man. How lovely to have you back. Thank you very much. Yes. Teeth and all. Teeth. <laughs> Overbite, I think it's called, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you called Actually, it? Actually, speaking of teeth, my poor mother had um, pyorrhea, whatever that mm -hmm. is. You know, the, gu it's the gums. gums. They said the gums are going to come. The teeth are all right, but the gums have to come out, you see. <laughs> but the poor lady, she she had uh, 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 the whole top set taken out in one sitting, mm -hmm. and the following week, the bottom set. And I used to say to her as a boy, I mean, I'm jumping back again. I used to say That's to her because right. I was naughty. And I said... Uh, could you say sausage for me, you see? And she said, what did you say? I said, say sausage. Well, she looked to me a bit strange. I said, no, don't say that. I'll say say something else. Say, say Marshal Pilsudski. <laughs> and I was delighted to hear him say Marshal Pilsudski, you see. <laughs> so uh, there was that sort of, uh, even though I was shy, there was a little bit of devilment there, I guess. Yes. You know, I mean, because I took my sister once to, uh, we saw this orchard and I said to my sister, we're going to go in there and pinch some apples, which you shouldn't do. But when we got over there, we didn't notice the ball in there. Uh. And we were in there, I suddenly heard this snorting and I turned around and pawing the the, the, the field up farm with this huge freezing ball. I said, we've got to get out of here. we got to get out. Walk with me. Come on. And we started walking and he started walking. We started to trot, and he started to trot, and we ran. I threw her over the over the gate. <laughs> he could have come through the gate. It was the most dangerous, stupid thing I've ever done. But going back to uh, show business again, mm. um, I met a fellow who lived in Geelong, and I was invited to come out here. So I came out on the £10 scheme. Good for you. Which was good, you know. Yeah. No, it was good fun. It took six weeks to get out Wasn't here. Wasn't great? And, uh, it's a well, great trip. Oh, yes. We came to the Suez Canal yeah. and uh, saw a few dirty Arabs there, but uh, <laughs> revealing themselves to everybody. <laughs> well, they got nothing else to do, I suppose. That's what it almost had to do. <laughs> and we were all singing Sand in My Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, it was, I feel sorry now for people who, who, who are not able to do that trip. I mean, I came out through that, that route too. And I oh, just did you thought, really? Yes, I just thought it was absolutely marvellous. A wonderful voyage. What an incredible thing that, I mean, the construction of the canal. Yes. When you just see a ship going along through... Through sand. Through sand. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't go fast because the wash would wash everything away, see? Yes, yeah, so it crawls along. Yes. Oh, no. Did you come through Port Said? Yes. And all the fun of selling stuff and the gilly gilly yes, men yes. who come up and show you yeah. their tricks while people rob you. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, if, uh, that's amazing. You pick pockets. Yes. <laughs> and you put your stuff down over the ship's side and you say, you put, send down the money. And they say, no, you put, you put the uh, thing I'm buying in the, in the basket, you know, and so this, this incredible backwards and forwards thing. <laughs> and we went to Algiers and, uh, oh, and I was thinking of, no. um, I, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, we went to Colombo too. Oh, you see, so did you really? Yeah, so did, did I. <laughs> we could with have all met. those poor people with no arms begging. begging. Oh gosh, <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> a bit. Oh, it's not. Oh nice. yeah, it's not nice. No, no, yeah. not good. No. So what? What year did you arrive out here? Don't tell me we're 1952. on the same ship. 1952. Oh, I just beat you. Oh, <laughs> but think Skype. of the fun we could have had. I know. <laughs> Oh, we had a lot of fun. It was, um, yeah, Colombo, that's right. Yeah. And Fremantle, uh, yeah, Fremantle we pulled in it. That's yeah. right, yeah. But you, you got off in Melbourne, presumably. Yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. And did your friend my, meet the you? Friends met me, which was terrific. Mm. And uh, I remember the first morning in Australia when I heard a magpie. Mm. You know, they go, yes. they do that funny sound. And a little I, chortling. And I'm lying in bed thinking, Ever sad, and it was a big pie, and it was marvelous, isn't it? Yeah, Wonderful marvelous. sound, yeah. So it's a very Australian sound. As oh, far it as is. Yes. It is. Yeah. They're uh, 
a bit naughty at the moment, aren't they, magpies? Yes. Diving <laughs> down and well, they're looking after their nests. Oh, of course they are. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that, that's how it all started, and then I met uh, Barry Crocker in Geelong. He was living there at the time, and he was with uh, you know because I've done shows in England, and he said to me, he said. Uh, we've got a, a musical comedy company here, why don't you come down and do some stuff for us? I said, oh, all right, fine. So I did, and... Um, was that in Melbourne? I was doing, no, this is in Geelong, Geelong, yeah, because yeah. yeah, I didn't, you know, it took me a little while to get settled down, two or three years, you know, and... Uh, How long did it take you to get your first job? About 10 minutes? No, no, I actually worked for the um, SEC for a while. Oh, did you? The State Electricity Commission. Yeah, mm. A proper job, you mean? Yeah, a proper <laughs> job, yeah. <laughs> I said that it... The fellow said, we could put your name up in lights, you know. I said, well, he said, I'm an electrician, you know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> so anyway, I, I did a few shows and did some reviews. And um, then I decided to come to Melbourne. And uh, there was a review on in, um, in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I'd like to come and do some stuff for you there. And so... I did, so I, I got up there and did a, one of the routines I had worked out, and I heard then some television people were coming in to watch it, mm -hmm. Hori Dargies and people like that, so I thought... Oh, remember Hori Dargie, yeah, yes. Yeah, marvellous, and it Joe is. Hudson, Yeah, he actually was my best man when we were married. Really? Yes, Joe. He's unfortunately passed on now, and... Uh, but the Hori Dargie group, Quintet, weren't they? Yes. Oh, they yes. were fantastic. Yeah. So, so that was a review, how long was that? did that run? Well, it, it ran about oh, two months, I think, something mm -hmm. like that. And um, I said, oh, okay, you, you know, can I come around and audition for you around at Channel 9? Because they were looking for someone. And so that's where it happened. And uh, I went around there and, and they were doing a show called Thursday at 1. And so I got on doing um, comedy sketches with Shirley Broadway, the Broadway people. You're nodding your head, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, that's how it all started with te television, you know. That was uh, which was good fun. Anyway, pardon me, I'm sniffing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to have a bit a bit of music now. Okay, fine. While you think what you're going to talk about next. Yes, I'm just going <laughs> to blow my nose. That's okay, right. Happen. Well, we'll have Larry Adler and oh, a lovely, foggy day lovely. in London. starry sky nice work if you can get it and you can get it if you try strolling with a one girl sigh and sigh after sigh nice work if you can get it and you can get it if you try just imagine someone waiting at the cottage door where two hearts become one who could ask for anything more Love on one who loves you And then taking that vow Nice work if you can get it And if you get it Won't you tell me how
And that was Larry Adler himself singing a very young Larry Adler in 1938. Yeah. What a man, what Fantastic. a man. Fantastic. Wasn't he? Amazing. 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 Okay, now we're going into television. Yeah. Well, it, apropos of what you're saying yep. about Larry Adler, yep. the Horidagi Quintet, Yes. they all played these instruments and they were fantastic. Mm -hmm. They always amaze me how they can get that sound out of them, you know, it's almost, um, well, what they played with um, symphony orchestras, didn't he? Yeah. That's right, yeah, fantastic. Oh, yeah, anyway, very much so. He played well, lots of classics. Joe Hudson who was with the Hari Dagi uh, Quintet, him and I did lots of sketches in a show called Thursday at One. Incidentally, Bert Newton came from Channel 7 and, and he compared that for a little while. Eric Pierce compared oh, yeah. it for a little while. They were just searching around, I guess. And we did lots of um, sketches. It was a, it's a big show. We had uh, dancers. We had the um, Channel 9 singers. We did things like Kismet. We did a whole thing from Kismet there. Really? One afternoon. Yeah, this was an afternoon show. I mean, early television was, I think, better than what it is now, to be quite frank with you, because they had um, they had live to air drama because in those the early days there, was, there were no videotapes in the studios. They had the uh, BP hour. They had the Shell hour. And we did a, we did a whole thing that Bill Maynard, who was in that um, Bill Maynard play, played in that thing. Um, oh, crikey, what's the name of the show? Um, he was a comedian when he came out here and he brought this thing called You Two Can Have a Body. And the story about it was that um, they went into this castle and they, they found this typewriter and someone started touching it and it started typing at the future. Oh. And so they all betting on horses and doing all that sort of thing. It was, it was a funny, funny play. And uh, the director, Bill Beams, told me that it was over 800 shots live to air that he had to Good cope with wow. then. I mean, give me some idea what these people were doing then. Yeah, really, really. It's, it's, uh, uh, now it's all... Oh, it's all videotape and it, they can stop and go back and do what... The only sad yeah. thing is that a lot of those shows, of course, you know, you can't ever see again because they were not recorded in exactly, any way. Yeah, exactly. Not, not filmed. No, that's true. That's yeah, true. They could have been filmed, yeah. I guess. But well, there were uh, lots of things. I mean, I I eventually left when Thursday at one folded. We did another show, which was a Wednesday afternoon show. Um, I mean, going back to Thursday at one, I just I must just sort of reiterate mm -hmm. something that uh, when we did Kismet, we had we had sheep, <laughs> and um, we had uh, we had goats in the studio. I had to follow them around all the time. <laughs> Because they kept running around all the time, <laughs> and uh, my good friend Alma Douglas, who's just passed on just recently, he he sang the part of Hajj, and um, no, it was it was all oh, it was tremendous uh, television then. Anyway, I was then invited to go into in Melbourne tonight, doing comedy and that, so that was good. Excuse me, <clears throat> and um, we did sketches uh, five nights a week. And one night, Joe and I was I was doing a, a sketch because I used to play a character called Aris Arbuckle, and he became quite well known. This this character, and this particular night, um, I was stretched my leg sideways, and Joe tripped backward and sat on the side of my leg, and he weighed fourteen stone, and you could hear the crack uh -oh. right across the studio, and I went down like a bag of spuds, as they say, you know, and. Mm -hmm. uh, my cartilage had gone and so they put me on a stretcher and uh, Graham Kennedy came over and put a lily in my hand, a rotten devil. <laughs> and, uh, that was thoughtful. You all right with lilies? I said, yes, <laughs> you know, I was in pain. And everybody, the, the audience in the studio were laughing their heads off. It's what they call the injury laughs, you see, that's what it is. <laughs> In fact, I had to go in hospital then, and I was in, in uh, Cabrini Hospital there for 10 days when the, the, the surgeon operated, and he came up after the, after the operation. He said, I've left a scalpel somewhere. I thought, hey, you naughty boy. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and so... Did you get any more lilies in hospital? No. No? They, they used to keep beer for me in the plas plasma room. <laughs> Because it was near Christmas, they said, do you, do you want a beer? And then my friend came into the hospital one day and he said, how's your cough? I said, what are you talking about? He said, I brought this link to him for you. It was 
brandy in a leak just bottle. <laughs> So my temperature used to go up quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny, and they, they've got beds in there that if you pull a lever on the back, up near you, the back comes up. If you pull a lever a bit further down, the front comes up. And I thought, what about happen if I pulled them together? And that photoed me up like a sandwich. <laughs> and the floor comes at me, who had a hernia operation. He's going, oh, oh, don't make me laugh. Oh. <laughs> I said, be all right. Oh, God. So anyway, while I was there, this Oris Arbuckle thing, there was a guy who... Did you I, say I, Iris Arbuckle? Oris. 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 Okay. Sorry, it's just my teeth. They do this to me. <laughs> it's uh, Oris. That's him. Okay. Uh, without the her. Hmm. And uh, if you haven't got a her, well, you haven't got no, a crack. Really. <laughs> really. And um, the thing about it was that uh, we used to get stars coming into IMT in those days because there was... Um, an arrangement with the Embers Club down in South Yarra. Remember that? Do you remember that? Yes. That's oh, terrific. And IMT, and we used to get Ray Charles and yes. Mel Tome and people like that used mm -hmm. to come into the show. George Shearing. And uh, there was a comedian called Dick Curtis, American guy. And I used to feed, being also doing comedy, I used to feed some of these people who came into the place. So... They said, um, he said, well, look, I, I'd like to take some kinescopes to Ed Sullivan of this character you're doing. And um, it happened to me then when I did my cartilage and I was in hospital and they came and said, look, as soon as you get out, we're going to do two more kinescopes because there was nothing to do with, um, you know, videotapes or anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I went out there hobbling around with a funny leg and uh, we did uh, two of those and... They never ever get got sent anywhere. Oh, what? They, the whole thing was ruined. And uh, two months later, a fellow came up to me and he said, "Those uh, kinescopes. What what's got to happen with them?" I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "They're on my desk. They've been there for two months now." So the whole thing fell apart, which was a shame, really, because oh. it was it would have been a good in anyway. He was regardless of all that, but it was it, in the IMT days. I mean. I thought it was amazing because we had um, two people writing comedy all the time there, Hugh Stuckey and Jack Brown, and Hugh Stuckey is a brilliant comedy writer, and they used to churn this stuff out five nights a week, incredible really, mm. Mm. and uh, the thing about it was that we, the, the doors would open the different ways, we never had a time to rehearse it that way, you go to grab the door, to say goodbye, I'm going to leave you now, and the door would open the opposite way, and the whole set would really fall over. <laughs> and we were doing a sketch one day, and I was playing Horace Buckle and he was a prisoner of war, and Joe was playing the Gestapo, and he came in, and and um, we never used to put some things in because we said we'd leave it till we get to live to wear because they'll already take it out, you see. <laughs> and he's described, and I, and I I marched in in the, you know and like doing the goose step and. He said, uh, you learned how to do the goose step? I said, no, I got starch in my underwear or something <laughs> like that. And uh, he said, I want to find out where the gun is. Give me the plans. And uh, up in the grid was a box full of rubbish. And the thing about it was that he said, do you know the Fuhrer? And I said, yes, didn't he, read her? Didn't he write that book on camp? <laughs> and he said, what are you talking about, you see? <laughs> so that was not in the script. <laughs> talking about Hitler's life yeah. so anyway <laughs> the flat the, he actually found out where the gun was and he rings up the Luftwaffe to bomb the place this was in the end of the sketch mm -hmm. and uh, he said bomb it now and the, the, where I told him it was was where we were and so the sound effect went off the explosion flash pot and they pulled the, the this box open so all this rubbish would flow and it wouldn't come out because they packed it in too tight and then get back, cut back to Graham Kennedy sitting and, and, and doing some commercials, cleared the set because all the lighting plots were fixed. And they brought this set in and this girl came in in a fishtail dress and she had a plunging neck. Like she's standing right under this box. <laughs> so we were all standing there waiting for something to happen. <laughs> and she's singing away. Oh, 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 and all that stuff. Everything. 
I think somebody must have tweaked it because out of this box came all this rubbish. You've never seen it like that. Full as earth, it went down in her dress, and oh, it was. Uh, I looked over at Graham, not because he was a pair of feet, he'd fallen off his seat <laughs> <laughs> laughing so much. It's, but this was the joy of the show. Of course. It was so funny. Wonderful. All these Absolutely. things going going wrong. Yeah. We're going to have to listen to a little bit more music. Oh, all right. Then. It's something that you love and I love very oh, much. Oh, good. The Genevieve Waltz. Oh. Again, Larry Adler, because we love him dearly. <laughs> don't have a lot of time left but oh. Uh, oh. Oh. oh dear all together now no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, sounds like the Luton Girls Choir <laughs> <laughs> yes it is oh yeah we, we, we're winding up to be quite like that oh are we? you yes you and I together oh, I think. oh then fine terrific. maybe yeah um the, the the you were talking about all the actually <laughs> the accidental humor that happened on television in those early days when things got out of control and everybody kept going and it was so good and so, wow, so, so funny. Wow, this is it. it, it and uh, I think most of the people that were in early television had that great thing of ad-libbing. Yeah. Which, uh, I don't know how to... See, the thing about it is that the young people today, which is a bit unfortunate for them, they don't have a chance to do vaudeville, mm. which comes from the uh, French, doesn't it? Yep. It was devised in French, yep. vaudeville. Vaudeville. And, um, no. I mean, the thing is that, um, apropos, you're talking about ad living. I mean, I'm doing Beauty and the Beast because I'm digressing from where I'm going from, but the um, computers broke down and I walked forward to the audience and they pulled the front cloth in, which I enjoyed. I, I was uh, chatting to the audience, having a bit of fun. 
And the fellow from New York said, are you all right? I said, yeah, that was terrific. I enjoyed that. And he said, <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, going back to television, it, it's, oh, sorry, I've been bumping Mike again. The, going back to television, I've waved my arms around a lot, you know. Um, it's it's really been fine. I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, in those days, it's not time is money thing. Now is time is money. Mm -hmm. yep. Everything is money, money, money. Not to let you go. And today, they're, they're so bent on close-ups, close-ups, close-ups all the time that they're isolating one person from another. When we were doing sketches in the old days, they just let you go. I mean, uh, for example, when I, I came and I was working with Tony Lamond and I was her, her son, mm -hmm. believe it or not, mm -hmm. and she was going to... I'm to, working on it. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, uh, this father, she said, I've come to buy this flat and everything I touched fell apart, you see. And the end of the sketch was that I had to put my hand on the wall and fall through the wall. And I said to him, could you just slit it a little bit, the flat, so that it give me a bit of a go, you see. They'd forgotten to do this. And I, I leaned against the flat and everything went. <laughs> the whole thing collapsed. <laughs> There's members of the crew running backwards and forwards. He's winding me up, you know. <laughs> He's winding me up already. <laughs> we're we're going to, um, we're going to, uh, I'm really going to have to finish. But... You will come back. I'd more. love to. Great. Okay, that's well, a promise. Will come back again? Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to Interludes with Chris McKenzie.